On Friday, the 23rd of May, 2014, at 12.27pm, fire crews responded to reports of a building fire at 167 Renfrew Street in Glasgow. This was the Glasgow School of Art. This video reports how the fire started and spread throughout the building and the movement and actions of the fire service. The Glasgow School of Art, designed by world-celebrated architect and designer Charles Rennie Mackintosh, is widely considered to be Mackintosh's masterwork. The building measures 75 metres by 25 metres and consists of 10 levels including mezzanine floors. It was built in two stages. The east side of the building was built between 1897 and 1899 and the west side between 1907 and 1909. World renowned, it was known as the Mac and is a grade A listed building. Within its archive, it houses the world's third largest Rennie Macintosh collection. Of the 1900 students that attended the Glasgow School of Art, 20% are international, 20% from the rest of the UK, and approximately 20% are postgraduate. It has had three Turner Prize winners since 2005 and it attracts 20,000 visitors per year. At 12.27 on Friday 23rd of May 2014, the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service Operations Control Johnston received a call stating there was a building alight at 167 Renfrew Street in Glasgow. This was the Glasgow School of Art. The control room mobilised the predetermined attendance of Tango 01 Alpha 1, Tango 01 Alpha 2 and Tango 04 Alpha 1. The fire originated in the projector, which was located in the student display area of Studio 19. The studio was in the basement at the west side of the building. Self-expanding foam was used for artistic effect in creating wall panels. As the foam is expelled from the can, the propellant is a mixture of three highly flammable gases and is also extremely flammable once dry. As these gases passed over the electrical internals of the projector, it caused indirect ignition by an electrical spark. As the fire grew in size, flames impinged onto the foam positioned behind the projector. The fire then spread laterally around the foam-lined room as well as vertically towards ceiling level. Flames travelled up the wall directly behind where the projector was positioned. A CO2 fire extinguisher was emptied onto the fire with little effect. The alarm was raised and staff ensured all persons in the immediate area evacuate from the basement, with a large number exiting from the fire exit onto Scott Street and the main entrance onto Renfrew Street. A major contributory factor for the fire spreading throughout the building was from the obsolete ventilation system running throughout the building. A plant room in the basement supplied warm air via internal brick-lined shafts and timber ductwork running horizontally to studios, offices and corridors throughout the building. This heating and ventilating system is no longer in use but there are voids running the entire height of the building which can carry pipes and cabling. In Studio 19, the wall around the display area was constructed of timber panels, Canadian redwood pine, which formed the outer covering of a service void. An area slightly to the left of the projector had the panels removed allowing access to the void where sprinkler pipes had been run previously. This void ran the entire height of the building to roof level. This timber line void acted like a chimney and allowed flames, hot gases and smoke to travel vertically. As flames and hot gases reached ceiling level of Studio 19, they then broke through into Studio 31 on the ground floor directly above Studio 19. At least four voids run vertically throughout Studio 31 and these allowed unchecked fire spread to areas above and on the same level. The fire then spread vertically either side of the doorway and also horizontally in a westerly direction along voids in Studio 31. One of these voids allowed lateral access to Studio 32 at ceiling level. And from the Studio 32, fire then spread through voids into the Macintosh library above. The library's construction, layout and high fire loading, which included timber furniture, panelling and books, 
meant the room contents became totally involved in fire. From the library, fire spreads vertically via voids to the library storage space and then onto Studio 58 on the second floor via voids and ceiling. It then spread laterally from Studio 58 to Studio 57 and also to the area known as the Hen Run. Returning to the ground floor within Studio 31, the fire is also spreading via all four vertical voids to the first floor studios above, 43, 44 and 45. Flames then travelled up the walls to ceiling level, traversed across the ceiling and exit at window level. The fire intensified due to the inrush of oxygen via the windows which had failed due to the fire. Fire spread to the second floor studios on the north side of the building from the first floor studios 43 and 44. Fire's two alternative routes meet on the second floor consuming all the studios on the west side of the building. Constructed of timber, glass and lead lined roofs, once these failed, the inrush of oxygen intensified the fire affecting the second floor, which led to the collapse of the roof. The predetermined appliances arrived on scene at 12.32 at the front of the building and the OIC began to gather information from the responsible person. The responsible persons described the location of the fire in a room at the end of the corridor in the basement and that the best access would be from the entrance on Scott Street. This would later become Sector 4, with the front of the building on Renfrew Street becoming Sector 1. BA Entry Control was set up at the Scott Street entrance and called the Basement Entrance. To further complicate the decision-making process, there was a report of persons trapped in a lift within the building. This lift was later located on the basement level with its doors open and empty. From the Scott Street entrance, BA teams first entered the building at basement level with instructions to locate and fight the fire. One team assisted in guiding the hose reel into the building while the other progressed to the area described by the responsible person. They manoeuvred to Studio 19 made an attack and successfully knocked the fire down in that area. When returning to BA Entry Control, it was apparent that the fire was spreading to other parts of the building and all available information was relayed to the incident commander. A BA team was tasked to search the stairwell. As they proceeded up the stairs to the top floor, they encountered heavy smoke logging that reduced visibility to practically zero, although there were no noticeable rises in temperature. On reaching the top floor, visibility slightly improved crackling could be heard. On inspection, heavy thick black smoke could be seen in the window of one of the rooms and the flickering of flames at ceiling height. The entry control officer was informed by radio that it was a well-developed fire on the top floor. Due to the amount of air left in their BA sets, they made their way back down the stairwell to the ground floor. On the way down, the smoke in all areas was slightly heavier but there was no significant rise in temperature. BA teams were then committed to lay hose lines up the fully smoke logged stairwell. Due to the design of the stairwell, it was an arduous and time consuming task. Initial attendance was being stretched as they were being dispatched to various reported locations of the fire on each floor. Simultaneously, external firefighting had commenced with external jets and aerial appliances located in Sector 1. Six BA teams were in constant turnover from the entry control point on Scott Street. From the Renfrew Street entrance at Sector 1, BA teams made their way to the ground floor and first floor corridors, which gave access to the west side of the building. They worked on creating a firebreak to keep the fire contained to the west side. On the first floor firebreak, they knocked holes through the wall into Studio 43 to assist with the firefighting, as the fire in this area kept flaring up and required constant attention. As the firebreak was being set up on the first floor, a BA team was tasked with gaining access to the top floor from the east side. The fire was progressing along the top floor through the studios and hen run and had the potential to break into the east side of the building. As the ARP attacked from the front of the building, a BA team fought the fire back in the hen run. BA teams used a ladder from the hen run to gain access to the roof and with braking equipment gained access into the roof space. Using a hose, they could then attack from the opposite side to the ARP and a stop area was made against the fire. 
With fire breaks and firefighting off the west stairwell at all levels, the fire was finally brought under control. Salvage was an early consideration and advice was sought from the responsible person. It was established that the library and the basement were of high importance. In the event of a fire, everything within these areas was to be removed. With the library involved in fire, focus was placed on removing the items of importance from the basement. The east entrance to the building on Dalhousie Street was used for access to the basement, as the west and front were in operation. Due to the amount of water in use, the basement began to flood and pumps were used to remove water out of the west exit. The ground floor in the Reed building, adjacent to the Macintosh building, was used to house the salvage items. Salvage work, in conjunction with staff from the School of Art, continued through till the 30th of May. Twelve twenty-seven. Auto alarm actuation received at Operations Control Johnson. Three pump PDA mobilised. Twelve thirty. First call from member of the public. Twelve thirty-one. Tango zero one alpha one, Tango zero one alpha two, and Tango zero four alpha one in attendance. Twelve forty-two. Make level two. Four BA in use. One horse jet in use. Persons reported. Twelve forty-five. Severe smoke logging affecting three floors. 1302. Make level 3. 1304. Sectorised into sectors 1 and 4. 10 BA in use, 2 main jets, 2 hose jets in use, 1 ARP currently being set up. 1319. ACO Goodhue now in attendance. 1340. Level 4. 10 BA in use, 4 main jets, Two ARPs. 1356. 30% of building well alight, implementing fire breaking stairwell to divide building in two. 1407. Responsible person has a confirmed all persons accounted for, attempting to put fire break in roof. 1506. Establishing fire break in roof space, stage 2 BA in use, four main jets, three ARPs in use, salvage now in operation. Light portable pumps pumping water from basement, undertaking salvage in accordance with salvage plans. 1725. BA crews still committed to firefighting and salvage. Fire break over central stairway has been established, three ARPs, six main jets and ten BA in use. 1830. ACO Boyle now in attendance. 1924. Extinguishing hotspots and breaking into voids using small tools. Two hose jets, six main jets, BA still in use. Salvage work is being undertaken. Approximately 120 BA sets used. 2218. One sector carrying out firefighting, one sector carrying out salvage. Six BA in use. Two teams damping down and dealing with hotspots, one team establishing lighting for nighttime operations. At 10.20 on the 24th of May, a stop message is received. At 1526 on the 30th of May, Tango 01 Alpha 1 and Tango 01 Alpha 2 leave the incident. Seven days, two hours and 55 minutes after the arrival of the first appliance.